among the comics of America, I have one of the all-time bad gig stories. I played a week at an outlaw biker's titty bar on the outskirts of a refinery town called Beaumont, Texas. <laughs> and from this story, Kenny and I put together something we call Bad Gig Blues. And so let's talk about that play. Might be Chicago, South LA, might be Bossier City, Mobile Bay. They all play the same son. They all play the same son. I guess I'll get down these old highway shoes, get a piece of them bad gig blues. I'm going to repeat what I just said because almost every word is important. I played a week, a week, at seven goddamn days. I did five 15 minute shows per day at an outlaw, outlaw, outlaw. The Hell's Angels don't go in there. <laughs> Biker's Titty Bar on the outskirts. It's not in town. Oh, no. Oh, shit. I'm 20 minutes from hell. <laughs> Chances are none of you have been anywhere close to an outlaw biker's titty bar back up in the swamps on the Texas-Louisiana border about 15 miles north of the Gulf of Mexico on the Sabine River in the mosquito capital of the world. Well, let me see if we can draw a little picture for you here. You pull in the dirt parking lot. Dirt sort of set the ambiance of the same. Over there, there's a couple of guys vomiting in the trash bin. Some other poor fella here is laying face down in the dirt. Seems to have fallen on his knife. It's what the bikers said happened. They said he was a clumsy sort of fella. He'd been getting ready to fall on that knife for a couple of weeks or so. Uh, who am I, Columbo? Okay. I step over the body. Inside of the establishment, there are 17 girls that work as dancers. And I use the term girls loosely. Well, they were females, but of an undetermined species. Uh, of the 17 girls, eight of them nicknamed Bubba. <laughs> Tattoos took a higher priority than dental work did. <laughs> All right, you got the girls. Girls aren't the problem. It's the Neanderthal men getting out to look at the girls. That's my problem. See, I've left something out of this story. Real important part. This is the first, and I might add, only week they did comedy at the Outlaw Biker's Titty Bar. And I was the sacrificial comedy. <laughs> These guys don't know I'm going to be there. The sign says, Titty. never said and confident. <laughs> these guys think these mustache tattooed toothless women are the epitome of femininity. They think I'm some titless faggot from Houston. As well. <laughs> matter, matter, matter of fact, that was my nickname. Uh, Gentlest faggot from Houston. <laughs> you talking to me? So there I am. They hate me. Oh, goddamn, they hate me. And when you're hated by a biker's bar, they don't boot his, okay? Somebody throws a beer bottle at you. 
Now, if you've never been on stage, it's strange up here. You can't see. The lights are blinding. It's just black out there. So when they throw the beer bottle, it just like it magically fucking appears. <laughs> you know, oh shit, bam, and it crashes up against the wall behind me. Now I should have left right then. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I was pissed, you know, I was fucking pissed. They almost hit me with a goddamn beer bottle. Now words are my way. I go, oh hey guys, that was really funny. You know, almost hit me with that, funny. Listen, I, I've got a joke for you guys. You're gonna love this joke, you know why? Bikers wear denim condoms because they shrink to fit. <laughs> you know, in retrospect, you know, looking back on it and all, you know what I mean? I, I probably shouldn't have said that. The outlaw biker's titty bar, but it did. Now, when I say that, in the back of the room, I presume the guy that threw the bottle, but whoever, somebody yells the strangest heckle I've ever had. Out of the darkness, I hear blowjob, blowjob. I go, uh, are you asking or are you offering? Is that what I mean? You know, in, in retrospect, <laughs> you know, that, that clarity of hindsight, you know, you can see it so much better. I, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. But not only did I say it to compound my stupidity, I stood there to see what was going to happen next. And sure as shit, something did. So play the dude with attitude's gonna be then. Try to use you. Who knows what's wrong or right? Who knows what's black or white? Who knows when the lightning will strike? Back at the titty bar. <laughs> When I say that, he rushes the stage, but I don't see him coming because the lights are in my eyes. I don't hear him coming because everybody's yelling at me over the condom joke. It's really getting ugly out there. So I don't know he's coming until he's there. He leaps up on stage and God damn, this son of a bitch is huge, okay? He's huge. He's six, seven, 270 pounds, you know, fatigue pants, metal-tipped combat boots, and a, and a death head muscle shirt with fuck mom here. <laughs> He's got a bad attitude. He's got a bad attitude. And he's big, and I'm not. Now I can like try to hit him with a bike stick, but if I miss, if I miss, well he's just gonna make me blow him there in front of everybody. <laughs> if, if it comes to that, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, well, well I'd, I'd rather do it in private. Uh, well that way I can claim that I didn't, don't you say? You know what I mean? Oh no, we just talked. <laughs> Well, I'm a little sucking a cock without anybody knowing about it, Blues Kitty. Can you do that? <laughs> Could you hum a few bars? I think I can. Mm -hmm. I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, all right. Back at the kitty bar. So, so there I am, right? There I am. I mean, I can't whip this guy. I can't whip this guy. I'm not physically capable of whipping this man. I am physically capable of blowing him, but uh, I, I don't want to do that. But, but I could do that. <laughs> let, let me put it this way. The odds of me giving him a good blowjob are much better than me giving him a good ass kicking, okay? 
on their long shot all the way up the stretch.